Hello. We're here because it's festival season soon. Yay. We're going to Coachella in like two weeks. Is it really two weeks? Oh my god, in two weekends we'll be at Coachella. That's That's insane. Insane. Where is 2017 gone? Uh, no idea. Anyways, we're here to tell you some tips to survive your first time camping. And if you if you're <clears> going <throat> to Coachella for the first time, please camp. It's not the best thing, but it's the full experience. Yes. And you got you gotta experience it as a whole to get you know. Mm -hmm, Especially mm -hmm. if it's your first time, you have to camp. It's, you have to. It's it's, a, it's almost like a right of passage. You just gotta do it. You have to. That's our first tip number one. Camp. And we have 34 more tips for you. So keep watching. Yay. Yay. So tip number two, Coachella is a commitment. Be sure to take Thursday and probably that Monday off. Um, it seems kind of ridiculous, but on Thursday, you kind of want to go early to mm -hmm. get a good campsite. Because if you don't, you're going to get parked really far away and you're going to be walking you know, roughly like a mile mm -hmm. each way. And it's kind of a downer in between sets and all that if you're trying to get some food or just take a nap and you gotta walk a mile each direction mm -hmm. or whatever. It just it's kinda kills it. So, you know, if you if it's possible, try to get up early on Thursday and get a really good campsite because it makes all the difference. On Monday I would take the day off definitely because um, you're not going to want to work. Especially if you're going camping, they <clears throat> lock up the campsites, mm -hmm. so you're not even allowed to leave until maybe like 5 a.m. I, I don't know the exact time, maybe like mm -hmm. 4 or 5, mm -hmm. but you're going to be delirious. <laughs> like, I would just take the money off. It's not worth yeah. it. I Tip number three. This, is, this might be one of the most important tips. Pee before you go in to the checkpoint. Like, when you go into the line to get into Coachella, you should want to stop at a Starbucks or a Target and pee. It's your last chance to a normal bathroom. And I didn't know that. And we were checking in and there was a school nearby. And I I tried, <laughs> I tried to go to pee in that school, but I felt really awkward. So I had to hold it. And then right up from the get-go, I had to pee in a porta potty. And it was not cute. So um, tip number four, you guys. And this one's a money saver and just kind of quality of life. Ice is really expensive there. I think it's like 10 or $15, I don't remember, but it's per bag of ice. And you typically need about two bags of ice <clears throat> per day per cooler. Mm -hmm. So it adds up really quickly. And um, one way to circumvent this and sort of make your life a lot easier instead of going to the store and hauling back ice is you have two coolers, and this sounds a little ridiculous, but you have one cooler that's just ice, and you, um, we got our ice at the 99 cent store. It's obviously a dollar per bag, and I think it's a seven pound bag mm -hmm. of ice. I think we got about like six bags or mm -hmm. something. And then the trick to doing this though is that you put dry ice in with your regular ice, and that's gonna keep your ice packs cold. Mm -hmm. And then you have another cooler, which is you know your normal cooler with your foods and stuff. And then every day we would just put a new bag mm -hmm. of ice from our ice chest into our regular food yeah. chest. And it saves a lot of money, like I said, and it <clears throat> saves a lot of time because you don't have to haul because ice Because bags around. of ice at Coachella, they sell it for $20. Oh, is it 20 I thought it it's was $15. $20. So yeah, so you'll, okay, either <clears throat> way, it's you're going to be spending minimum $30, $40 per day. Yeah. And then between us, we were... Our ice lasted the entire weekend. Until Monday, we threw out ice. And, and on top of it, we gave our friends bags mm -hmm. of ice too because they didn't do the dry ice mm -hmm. technique. And what I recommend is about 15 pounds of dry ice mm -hmm. will last. Do not put the dry ice in with your food or unless you want everything to taste carbonate. It's disgusting. <laughs> Don't do it. So two separate coolers save you a lot of time, save you a lot of money. Um, yeah. Tip number five is don't be lazy when you're packing. Um, especially if you're trying to smuggle in some things, you might want to put it in the center of your car and then pack everything else around it. Yeah, they they, <clears throat> they typically, you know, they're looking for... Obvious things. Obvious things, wrong. so just don't, don't give them a reason. And mm -hmm. I've seen so many people <clears throat> where they've been lazy, they'll put stuff, 
and it's like they'll put it like right in the front and yeah. as soon as they open the door all your stuff just falls on the floor and yeah. then, then what happens though is if they find contraband they're gonna look even yeah. harder yeah. and that's just gonna slow down the line for everyone else so my advice is if you're sneaking in <laughs> anything that you're not supposed to just you know they it's just play the game yeah. you know they're playing the game you yeah. gotta play the game it's they gotta, you know, search and then you gotta pretend to like, you know, so yep. just play the game and you'll be fine. So um, when you get to Coachella, it's gonna be really difficult to get in and out of the festival. The thing is, whatever you pack, just be over prepared yeah. because whatever you don't bring, you don't want to leave the festival. It's so much work and from our experience, it's just not worth it's it. Not worth it. <laughs> so if you're thinking about like, am I gonna need this, am I not? Just buy it now. If you don't need it, you can always return it later. And Tip number seven is, like we said, the check-in part is really long. It's about an hour to two hours long. So people are, when they get there, you basically like line up in cars and you're just in line and you have to park your car and turn off your car. It takes that long. So you park your car and you wait in line for forever, but I will just get the party started and you can start drinking and having fun and people are playing soccer, people are walking around with their shoes off and their shirts off and I feel like Co Coachella starts there. Yeah. So when you're camping there's um, not very many options of what you can cook, especially on that gas grill. Mm -hmm. It doesn't <laughs> heat up very quickly. So a lot of things you're going to want to do or buy are already kind of pre-cooked mm -hmm. or like half cooked. So the quickest thing to do is like hot dogs. Hot dogs are like really quick. Um, also, another thing that we found really good in, in a pinch was Uncrustables. Mm -hmm. You just leave them in your freezer and you know, they're just like quick PB and J sandwich. Mm -hmm. um, just dry foods in general are like really good. Um, um, tip number nine is it's really hot at Coachella. So be sure to pack a lot of water. We found it useful to buy water bottles so that we can just drink it and you know, toss it. Um, so we bought a lot of water, bring Gatorade because you know you're gonna wanna need to get those electrolytes in after some days of partying. And the thing we learned from our friends when we were there last time was, this sounds really weird, but get children's Pedialyte yeah. and that will help with yeah. the hangover the next day. Like if you mix Pedialyte with Gatorade, it is like hangover cure. It's, um, number 10 is if you're gonna bring eggs, which I do recommend for breakfast and all mm -hmm. that. Uh, one way to save space is if you crack your eggs and put it into a Tupperware, um, you'll save a lot of space. And then, you know, it's like, you probably won't be able to make whatever eggs you want. But, you know, when you're at the festival, just do scrambled eggs, it's really easy. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, crack all your mm -hmm. eggs, put them into like a Tupperware and just bring them in that way. You'll probably save a lot of space. Our eggs got cracked when they, we left them in the carton. So that was not good. Um, tip number 11, is um, to buy cold brew before going to Coachella. Like, you know how at Whole Foods, they sell those like Stumptown like growlers or the Stumptown cartons or the blue bottle cartons? Buy those if you want your fancy coffee fix before Coachella because when you're at the festival, there's only one stop for Coachella. Last year was blue bottle, which was nice, but obviously it's overpriced and it was really hard to get to. It just, <clears throat> It helps that if you're just, you know, like coffee drinkers that if you need it early in the morning to just have that bottle ready to go. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, that was... And it's it's the same thing, guys, it's, you know. That was something I wish that we had done last because I yeah, think I, I just I assumed think. that there would have been like multiple kinds of like coffee trucks. I was like, it's Coachella and there's like food trucks and stuff. But no, there's one place to get coffee and don't be a sucker. <clears throat> uh, number 12 is to bring fruit. <laughs> yeah, so after all, like well, what I said, a lot of these foods are going to be like preserved, so it's, you know, it's going to be salty and all that. Mm -hmm. And then even at Coachella, <clears throat> they have foods there where, you know, they have smoothies and like healthier options, but a lot of the options they do have are going to be fried. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I try to eat like fruits and veggies to, you know, like not get scurvy or whatever. So I recommend just bringing like a few fruits and uh, just vegetables. Tip number 13. I don't know why, but I'm always the one talking about the bathroom. Bring <laughs> toilet paper! Um, this is huge because the toilet paper in 
the porta potties are really thin and gross. So bring your quilted Charmin toilet paper. It'll make you feel more human. I promise. It's like the best thing that I did. Sometimes you'll go into a um, mm -hmm. porta potty and they won't even have toilet paper. Yeah, so it's just it's exactly. another thing to just exactly. bring toilet paper. Um, girls, if you ha are bringing a purse to the festival, I would recommend bringing those like pocket tissues because obviously you're not going to carry a roll of toilet paper in your purse. So just bring those like pocket tissues and that can double as toilet paper. Another quick and easy thing to bring are wet wipes to like wipe yourself down after like for like a quick shower. Um, like, yeah, you we, get really dusty. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just, like, sometimes your hands get really dirty, or, like, if you're eating or whatever, mm -hmm. it's just nice to have wet naps in handy. Yeah. And number 15, to bring a tote bag for your showering needs. Um, it's just really convenient to have some sort of bag that you could put your your towel, your um, your shampoo, and your conditioner, all your those. Your clean clothes. Yeah, and then also, like, <clears throat> um, it's just easy because you don't want to be holding it and you're in line, so mm -hmm. just having a bag for that is, like, really easy. And then um, also, it's really convenient because they have hooks in the showers, mm -hmm. so then it's just so that your things don't get wet because there's no, like, chair or anything. You could just hang it, mm -hmm. and then it keeps all your stuff dry. Um, tip yeah. number 16 is don't ever pay for the VIP showers. No, it was like it. $10 a pop, and we were desperate day one. I was like not feeling human at all, and we saw the line for the shower, and we're like, okay, well, I guess we'll pay, but don't ever pay. Don't ever get desperate because it's not worth it. The VIP showers are actually worse than the normal showers. Yeah. Tip number 17. The best times to shower, 11 a.m. because that's when people are already going to the festival because that's when it opens. So most people are done showering and getting ready. And also 8 p.m. it's because most people are again still at the festival. But you might want to take a break from being out in the sun all day. You may want to come back and like um, <clears throat> put on a light layer because it does get a little bit chilly at night. And it's just honestly nice to shower after being dusty and gross and sweaty from the whole day and you might want to just feel human again for a little bit. I thought it was pretty genius because it's <laughs> like it's what she said so you come back and um, we typically try to come back and like maybe eat a little something and rest up mm -hmm. a little bit before the bigger acts of the night mm -hmm. so then um, when we do take a shower it just kind of refreshes us and um, you're able to go back into the festival and you just feel like really clean and yeah, yeah. at 8 p.m., no line. Good. You literally just walk in. Yeah, um, don't forget to pack a towel. I know it's really obvious, but it's one of those things that often gets overlooked because a lot of the times you like you think never to pack it because if you're traveling, yeah. you know, if you're at an Airbnb or a hotel, like you don't pack a towel or any mm -hmm. of those things. But you know, you are going camping and you don't want to be, sh you know, asking your buddy for his towel or whatever or sharing mm -hmm. a towel. So. Tip number 19, another bathroom trick, is mm -hmm. to bring a water bottle with you to go to the bathroom. I know that sounds really weird and disgusting, but the water is not for drinking. The water is actually <laughs> for washing your hands because you might want to just like, you know, wash your hands with the water because all it provides you is hand sanitizer and there's no running water, like there's no sink to wash your hands after you've done your business. And it's just really disgusting. Like after everyone's done their business, they've been using that same hand to squeeze the hand sanitizer and using it. But it's just gross. Don't do that, please. So my tip is to bring water. It'll make you feel more clean. Another bathroom trick <laughs> is um, there's like a normal bathroom-ish in the actual festival. There's only one though. Um, I don't really remember where it is, but it's by like the, the food tents. There's like a long line of like normal bathrooms with like stalls and you flush it and there's a sink and there's like hand blow dryers. That's the only normal bathrooms of the whole festival. So if you need to do your number two duties, I would recommend doing it in there instead of doing it in a port bar. Um, another tip was um, in the actual showering area, they have like a separate area that have that has outlets and stuff for you to like straighten your hair or blow dry your hair mm -hmm. or curl your hair. Um, I didn't know this, so I didn't bring a hair straightener. Um, so for camping, one um, advice I have is to just 
because you're camping and there's like so many other tents to just have some something that can distinguish your tent from others mm -hmm. so especially like at night when you're you know a little delirious and stumbling around <laughs> it just makes it easier to locate where your tents are mm -hmm. so um some people like put lights or they have a flag or have some sort of blow up thing or <laughs> just just some way to distinguish your tent from others people is, get really creative yeah get creative with it wow. number 23 is to just paint your car and get into the spirit car pull cella it's a thing um people have won VIP tickets for life, mm -hmm. and uh, I've never personally wanted anything, but I've heard stories of friends that have. So, and I think it's just fun to decorate your car. So. Um, tip number 24 also has to do with camping. Um, bring an easy up or like a canopy for your campsite because you're going to want to have shade. It gets really mm -hmm. hot, and between the four cars, I think we had three easy ups, three to four easy ups, and it was just really nice. Sometimes we had we used two to put over like our lounge area and then we I think used ours to put over our tent so that our tent area doesn't get too hot. Yeah. So it's like double shade for when you're sleeping and lounging around. Um, number twenty five bring lawn chairs to lounge around and um, foldable tables. Foldable tables are like really useful just because it's like it's better to cook on a table than cook on the ground. Mm -hmm. And it's just uh it's kinda cool to just have tables where people can like leave their drinks around or mm -hmm. play card games or whatever. It's just something convenient to have. Mm -hmm. Number 26 is when you're carpooling with multiple people, it's pretty convenient because um, because you guys get to share your guys' spaces together. Mm -hmm. So your, your actual living area is like really small, but mm -hmm. because we had, I think it was like four cars, mm -hmm. we had a huge <laughs> um, common area. Yeah. So it was just like really convenient and it just makes you feel like there's like different parts to, you know, your tiny little lot. Mm -hmm. But it's cool if you're going with multiple people because you get a bigger common area mm -hmm. and it's just, uh, it's a lot nicer to like have more space have more space yeah, yeah to just yeah. lounge around and do whatever mm -hmm. um tip number 27 is to bring zip ties and bring a mallet to set up your tent because we didn't have a mallet for our tent so we had to ask our neighbor who wasn't in our in our friend group no no, for no. their mallet no it was ours they yeah. asked us for it oh right yeah it was it was omar's oh never mind so our group did have a mallet but our neighbors most didn't people have don't, it. but yeah. somebody will. But you don't want to be that guy yeah. to just bring your own. Be yeah. so sufficient. Yeah. yeah. Um, zip ties were good for like tying things up on our easy up. Like we put a lantern. Oh, uh, I think, I think we also top. put like a shade, like a uh -huh. like the shades, like a side shade thing. So mm -hmm. it's like during the daytime. Yeah. But zip ties are just super convenient. Super. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, number 28 bring lanterns a lot of people see flashlights, but you have a phone so yeah. you don't Like maybe back in the day flashlights were important, but I say lanterns are more mm -hmm. important now And the reason I'm saying that is because um, we had two lanterns and then so we had one just in our tent So it's kind of like our lamp at night and so you know You could see what's going on in the tent, mm -hmm. but also we had one in the common area and we zip tied it to the top so it's kind of like you know and a brighter light source than a flashlight so that everyone can see while you're like cooking or just hanging out at night so mm -hmm. it's really really convenient tip number 29 is bring a gas grill um they only allow propane i was stupid last year so and stupid. we brought a butane grill and they asked us she got it confiscated i did so if they ask you if what kind of grill you have always say propane even if you are bringing a butane grill. Mm. Grill, they only allow propane, but you can bring a butane, just don't be stupid like me. Yeah. Um, number 30, I would bring USB speakers. We have like a Bluetooth one. And um, it pretty much saved us because our friends brought like different speakers or whatever, but he ran out of batteries. And these USB speakers, they lasted all weekend. And the coolest part about them, you can charge them through power banks or power bricks or whatever you call or them. Or your car or whatever. Yeah, whatever. They're mm -hmm. just super convenient and low energy. Yeah. Good to yep. have. And that brings me into number um, 31, which is to bring power packs. Um, power packs are just really convenient. You just charge your phone. You can, Like I said, you could charge your USB speakers. Mm -hmm. You can charge another um, 
you know, one of your friends, whatever, mm -hmm. or your camera. Mm -hmm. um, it's just super convenient to have. Um, another tip is to store your valuables in your car because obviously that's the only thing that locks. Because um, People, yeah, don't put it in your cooler. People don't put can it in your tent. Put, like, get things from your tent on, because obviously you're not going to be there the whole time. So if you have valuables, like your wallet, whatever, don't be put lazy. it in your car. Don't Again, be lazy. don't be lazy. Yeah. So wrapping up, there's just a few more miscellaneous things that don't really fall under camping, but these are just um, quality of life things that you can have. Um, mm -hmm. Bring something to cover your mouth. Like, it gets really dusty. Really it is dusty. the desert. So bring a bandana or bring some sort of scarf because at night especially, mm -hmm. it gets really dusty. And if you're coming back from the festival, you're walking with other people and dust is going to pick up. Just cover everywhere. your mouth, um, cover your eyes, just something that mm -hmm. will make your life a lot better. Um, tip number 33 is if you wear contacts like I do, bring eye drops because your eyes, again, are going to get really agitated from the dust. And it's just really drying and you just don't want to like not be able to see what's happening because I mean obviously you're there to watch things so bring eye drops. Um, tip number 34 is to bring a scarf which can double as a fashion accessory or a light layer like if you're cold at night but also like because the grass gets kind of dead and gross by towards the end of the festival, you might want to just use it to sit on. And uh, our last and final tip or trick is to just Remember to pace yourself and have a good time. Remember it's a marathon and not a race. So, you know, you might be having a good time or whatever, but just don't overdo it on Thursday or Friday. Mm -hmm. you, got, you got a few days to just, you know, take it easy and just kind of ease into it and just don't go overboard and just, you know, pace yourself. You'll have a marathon good time. of debauchery. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, just make sure that whatever you do, you just don't overdo it and mm -hmm. uh, don't do too much too quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, we hope you have fun, and we hope you survive your Coachella. Um, hope to see you there this year. Yeah, Bye. Peace.